Handu Health is very much focused on promoting and supporting preventative community-based health initiatives. We work with uh, groups uh, working in with health and well-being projects. We're working with groups uh, on their own terms, working with um, the projects and ideas that they have to bring about lasting and meaningful change in their communities. These are small community groups doing something very specific in a volunteering uh, base. What is very important to us is that we support groups to do what they want to do in the way that they want to do that. We facilitate on the process with, between community groups for them to develop their, their own ideas and to express their experience and their knowledge. It starts with it's, networking, it's isn't it? Right. Yeah, we want this to be discussed here and then we agree things together. We believe that they can share their experience and they are expert in their own projects. But in order to be able to um, evidence the impact of what we do, we have to find ways of measuring the impact that the, that the small community groups have um, in terms of the work that they're doing. We're at Dorset Gardens Methodist Church for our regular weekly lunch club uh, for people with HIV. Well, the Lunch Positive addresses the social needs of people with HIV. People still feel a great deal of isolation and stigma which is attached to the condition. And there really isn't any other group out there which involves peers in delivering the service for themselves. So we really are representative of people's needs um, because we're involved in addressing them for ourselves. Of having veg. But we're registered as a charity, but we're a voluntary group. And everybody does this voluntarily. Fifteen volunteers are involved in delivering the service every week, um, some of whom come from the client group as well. And we kind of consider ourselves a community group and um, a service which provides uh, a safe space for people with HIV. People feel more empowered to take care of themselves in, in, their, in their lives when they're not here. They've um, built social networks. Um, they go on to support one another when they're not here. And generally people feel more empowered to live with the condition happily and healthily. If, if we go back to the idea of how we started this, it was to, uh, because all the founders are asking mm. for evidence yeah. about measuring the impact and evaluations. Some of the problems that they, they have is mainly around volunteering and timing to really do what they want in the communities. I mean, yeah, the, one thing that, the one thing that I found talking to other people from other organisations is that they're really kind of amazed at the amount of work that we're all putting into this. Some of them, they have a full-time work, so they have to juggle between their work and, and the community group. I mean, I would rather put the energy into running the groups and getting mm. more people to, to do the groups rather than continuously writing mm. application forms. I mean, ah! Mm. Oh. Through funding, they are uh, facing now problems about how to prove that their groups are having an impact in the community. Most work, helping charitable work, health and wellbeing work now, needs to be evidenced more, because we all know that. Yes. Yeah. And that's how we developed this idea of measuring the impact for small community groups. I'm part of a group uh, called Active Lightworks and it's a group of um, therapists, complementary therapists, that are trying to bring complementary therapy treatments to community groups that would normally find it difficult to access those um, treatments and so I will offer reflexology or Indian head massage or shiatsu. A lot of people really appreciate just having someone to listen to them, having someone really take the whole of that person into account and don't just treat one aspect of them. So it may be, you know, that you have a physical um, issue that you want to work on. The, the benefits of, of the treatments that we give are one, to give immediate relief to people when they're in a very acute situation. They've expressed time and time again to, to us 
that it supports them, that it makes them able to take a more active part in their health, that they understand it more, that they feel more empowered, they feel more motivated. And actually, in gradually, step by step, it does resolve issues for certain people. It, it's very important that, that we listen to the groups and we understand what they feel is important to measure. And you've mentioned a few of the, 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 the challenges that you've mm -hmm. faced by you know, running the group and also having to get the evidence to be able to measure the impact. These groups are very valuable but it's difficult to do a measuring the impact in, in this community group. So somehow imparting mm. some of that energy and enthusiasm and belief in what you're doing to people mm. and showcasing the good work you do. Can you, I mean, what is it actually? Because it's, it's, we've all got a different impact, haven't we? To measure the impact, you need to have that process in your everyday work, trying to see how to improve your work e every day and every moment. It is difficult to prove things. It's always difficult to prove things, isn't it? But it should be something that is part of their own process in, or their, your own system of working. But once you develop that, it becomes easier and then you have a tool that helps you to improve your work. So I think it's just trying to turn the whole thing around and make sure that people are more in control of what they're doing um, and evidencing things in the way that makes sense to them. I think synergy uh, is about people growing together, learning together. It's along the sort of the ideas of a kind of creative community of people. Most of those people have all experienced mental health problems in one way or another. I feel that when I'm at my most, most vulnerable, when really all I can do is stay in bed, is that if I drag myself out and I actually manage to get here, instead of isolation, I've, I've suddenly got, you know, it's almost like family in a way. When they feel that the society is pushing them away and they can come here, they can be accepted. We, we've all sort of got our friendships and people that we get to know and so some of us come here more regularly than others. People who, people who have gone to experience experiences of mental health problems, they have something to give back to their peers. But you know, for the first time in 14 years, I'm not getting chronically depressed anymore. And for me, I mean, I never thought that ever would happen. A friend of mine who's joined this group who was really struggling, she said, it's not an exaggeration to say coming to Synergy was a matter of life and death for her. And I know what why? It's because Synergy is a safe space where you can grow, where you get support, and where you're not alone. We've been working for one year now. In one of the meetings, we were looking at all the information these groups are having from the interviews and their results and all of that, and we say, this is incredible, it's very important, it's wonderful information. What we are going to do with this? So. Uh, we started to think, maybe uh, an event, a conference. The important thing about the conference, it's about people sharing their ex experiences, sharing their best practice, it's about making connections, it's about celebrating um, the success that these groups have had in measuring the impact. We provide information and support to ladies suffering from endometriosis, their partners, um, families and friends. It means that they can come along on a monthly basis to a meeting where we can talk about their symptoms. Endometriosis is a gynaecological condition where the cells that normally line the womb grow elsewhere in the pelvis and these cells um, bleed on a monthly basis and cause adhesions, scar tissue and significant amounts of pain. And because it's an invisible disease, people don't talk about it much and women can feel quite isolated. So I feel that's like all I am now is just a big ball of endometriosis. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sick of it. Yeah. Some women are very severely affected and 
then th this means that they, they might not even be able to work anymore. I, I do not remember the last time I had a day where I had no pain in my body. Some people are confined to their house and um, can't attend meetings, but they still um, we still maintain the support via um, a closed Facebook group. People reply and say, we're thinking of you. They're always really willing to share all their um, little tips on how to manage the disease and how to live with it. So our support group means that women can come along and feel less alone with their disease. It's very important to show the funders and to other people, other stakeholders, what we do and that it's important what we do and the benefits and, and the impact that we are doing. In order for these groups to continue what they're doing, you know, fun, they need funding. It's going to be very difficult in the future for, for these community groups yeah. to receive funding to continue doing what they are doing. People who are giving out money now are wanting more evidence of that you're actually achieving something. It's, it's is making an impact of some sort. It's getting more difficult to have volunteers. It's getting more difficult for them to have time to run the groups. There is no recognition, you know, when people do evaluation about the amount of time people are put in about voluntarily. It's becoming like a job now and um, and we need to treat it like a job, more professional. And if you want us to provide a continuing service, there's got to be some sort of recognition and payoff for people. Because it uh, originated, we were a group of um, adult learning students. A few of us suffer from mental health problems. And we felt that we really had benefited from using photography and it very therapeutic. We really felt a huge benefit from um, using a camera. So we got together and started a, a club. And so it gives them a particular focus um, and they've met people. We're really open to anybody. They don't even have to have a camera. Uh, it's just uh, uh, wanting to come along, meet friends, um, and gain some confidence, you know, in using a camera. Well, I mean, that's, uh, that looks like it would be the best setting. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. And it's a very encouraging group. We're, we're not none of we're all amateurs, we're all unskilled. You can see people growing in confidence. They can see their, you know, their skills have improved. A few of our members who, who when they started hardly said anything and now you can't stop. <laughs> but we're all there to help one another. Measuring the impact is it could be something difficult, but if you do it in your own way and on your own path. You can do it and, and you can show many things about, about your group. There is value in what we do and that there are ways of finding out uh, about that value. How to measure this? Yeah. <laughs> I think to catch what our work is doing, numbers aren't necessarily the right medium, I think we might, we might just miss the point. People know what is best for them and I think if we come from there then you can start to, to measure the real impact. Finding our own ways of measuring, you know, we can get across what it is actually that we are doing because I think there are loads and loads of benefits. weekly singing groups for people with long-term illnesses. For instance, breathing difficulties, lung diseases, COPD, asthma, Parkinson's, heart disease. And we usually start with some stretches and breathing and singing exercises. And then we sing songs together. It's proven that um, through the singing, the immune system is strengthened. So people f uh, fall less ill. The singing groups are fantastic to get people to socialize because many of them live in individually in, in isolation. So through doing these exercises we learn to be more upright, to breathe better, to manage our breathing better, to get a better posture. For many of them it has changed their life around. One of the people can stay in paid employment instead of going on to benefits. Some of the people need, the, need to see their GP less and need to go to hospital less. We're just trying to, to get them back as much as possible to a way of being free and open again 
and managing their disease in day-to-day -day life. What's really important is that we should begin to understand what communities can do. What we need to do is turn this around and put people and support people to be more in control of their own lives. So he's just trying to see the other face of the voluntary sector. So we are doing this and we've been doing this for many, many years in Brighton. So it's time to look at them and to see the importance. Because people are often more powerful than they know and we need to begin with what we can do and, and build on that.